Today, we're going to work on the concept of function notation and its relation to graphs. Now, sometimes you want to be able to name an operation. Um, what I mean by is we have certain standard operations we're comfortable with, like multiplication, addition, subtraction, uh, division. But sometimes we want to create our own private uh, operation. Now, this is how you would go about doing it. First of all, you would first name your operation. In this case, we would call our op my operation salary. Okay. Now, suppose I want to create an operation that helped compute your salary. What I'm going to pay you is $10 per hour plus $5 for parking. So the amount of money you get is dependent on how many hours you work for me. So this is my function. And the variable that can change, depending on how many hours you worked, is called my parameter. So this right here is a function. It is not multiplication. This is not salary times hour. This says, I will tell you what your salary is if you tell me how many hours you work. Now, for example, if you worked seven hours, what I would do is I would plug in seven into wherever ours is, wherever the parameter is. And we would see that I would owe you $75. Now, if someone else worked only two hours, I could use the same function to compute their salary. And I would owe them $25. Now, this concept's a lot easier to understand when we actually name our operation and it makes some intuitive sense of why it exists. Now, we've done this calculation before. Now, this is a calculation that we've done before, but it's looked different. Now, suppose I gave you this problem. Find the value of y if y is equal to x squared minus x and x is equal to negative 5. So we've been comfortable with the idea of, sub of substituting. Now, whenever you substitute for a variable, you always want to put parens where the variable is. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer sometimes. So now when I plug in minus 5, you can see that that negative and that negative, they're not the same negative. You actually need to represent them twice. And this turns into... Now, I can give you the same problem, but write it in function notation. In this case, I would have, let's say, f of x is now equal to x squared minus x. And this sort of um, shows that this problem is the same as this problem. The reason why is because f of x and y are the same, are the same thing. So anytime you see y, you can change it with an f of x. Anytime you see f of x, you can change it with a y. They're interchangeable. They, they represent the same thing. Now, the reason why function notation is powerful is that I can ask the same question, and all the information is in this tight little notation. Find the value of y when x is equal to negative 5. So this, cal this uh, computation is exactly the same as what we had before, whereas up here, in order to say this or to ask this, it's very cumbersome. Once I define what f of x is, trying to say what is y when x is equal to negative 5 is, is very compact in, in, in this using uh, function notation. Okay. Now... Suppose I ask you to graph a line. So this is the line, um, y equals 2x minus 4. Now, let's use this concept that f of x is equal to y. So I can change the y with f of x. 
So now I have f of x is equal to 2x minus 4. So we can write a linear equation two different ways with either y equal or f of x equal. Now, let's see how this notation um, is really helpful. So let's say I plug in 1 into my function. Two minus four is equal to negative two. What this says is that at f of one, it's equal to negative two. Now remember, our little sort of memory mnemonic, we said f of x is the same thing as y, which means that for this function, if x is equal to one, then y is equal to negative 2. So we could rewrite uh, f of 1 is equal to negative 2 as a ordered pair or as a point, right? My x value is 1, and my y value is negative 2. And we can see that this point is on that line. So this is 1, negative 2. This point right here, 1, comma, negative 2 is the same as f of 1 is equal to negative 2. So we can write these uh, coordinate points by using function notation also. Now, what if I ask you to find f of 2? Let's, let's try the same computation. Uh, 2 times 2 minus 4 is equal to 0. So now we have this idea that um, f of 2 is equal to 0, which means that the point 2 comma 0 is on that graph. So that is 2 comma 0, or f of 2 is equal to 0. Now suppose I gave you this problem. Given this graph, find f of 2. Now, we said previously that f of x is equal to y. So if we do pattern matching, we can see that we know that the x value is 2. What we're looking for is what is the y value. So you could rewrite this problem when x is equal to 2, what is the y value? Okay. So x equal 2 is here, and I want to know from x equal 2 over here, where does this hit the graph, and what's its y value? In this case, it's uh, negative 3. So the idea here is the point 2 comma negative 3 is on this graph. Now, I can also ask you this problem the other way. Find all x values where f of x is equal to 1. Now remember, f of x is equal to y. So in this case, we know that the y is equal to 1, the question is, what is x? So another way of writing this problem is, when y is equal to 1, what is the x value? Well, let's see. When y is equal to 1, we get um, this line right here. That's the, that's the line when of y is equal to 1. And the question is, where does this hit my, um, where does this hit my graph? It hits it right here, and it hits it right here. So we can see that this right here is point uh, 4 comma 1, and this right here is 0 comma 1. 
So when the y value is 1, my x value is 0, and my x value is 4. So you would write your answer like this, or you can write it like this as a set. Do not write it as an interval. Or a point. If you wrote this, this is incorrect. Okay, that's bad. So the question here is when my y value is equal to 1, where does it hit the graph? It hits it at x equals 0 and x equals 4. For this one, when x is equal to 2, so this right here, where does it hit the graph? Right there at y equals negative 3. Okay, so go ahead and pause this video and see if you can do these problems. Okay, now that you've had a chance to look at these problems, um, let's do this. For this one, my x is equal to 2. I want to know what the y value is. So x equal 2 is, well, right here. And my y value is 3. So the idea here is that 2 comma 3 is on this graph. See, this point right here. Now over here, we are saying when x is equal to negative 1, what's my y value? Well, let's take a look at that. My x equal to negative 1 is over here, and it hits the y at 0. So what this is saying is that the point negative 1 comma 0 is on my graph. Now, uh, for these, we're saying that what are the x values when y is equal to 1? So y equal to 1 is, well, this line right here. And the locations where it... Um, hits the graph is here and here. And you can write your answer as either minus 4 comma 0, or you can write it as uh, minus 4 comma 0. And it doesn't matter whether the 0 comes first or the negative 4 comes first. The order doesn't matter. Over here, um, we're asking for when does y equal to negative 1? So y equal to negative 1 looks like this. And it hits the graph at this point. And my x value for that point is negative 2. Or you can write it as negative 2. Okay, thank you.